Welcome to the final episode of the Everblack podcast for 2019. Or if you're streaming it in uh, a few days' time, welcome to the new year. Happy new year. Uh, We are now in the future, 2020. Crazy, crazy times. Uh, On this episode, we are joined by my good friend, David Owen Blackley from Her Name is Murder Productions, who we had on earlier in the year to talk about their 10-year anniversary, and a lot has happened since then. We had a lot to catch up on, uh, because uh, David came back to Australia and worked with uh, some awesome bands like Our Last Enemy, and Red Hook, The Silencio, Pete Murray, and uh, a bunch of others. And uh, on this chat, we actually got a chance to talk about uh, his work with Sepultura, and uh, about their new album, how we've heard the new album, we love the new album, can't wait for everyone else to hear it, as well as uh, what the future holds for him and uh, going into 2020, uh, and also a little bit of Transformers too. There was a a good 20-minute chat (laughs) that I uh, had to edit right down where we talked about our love for uh, the animated Transformers movie, and uh, that got real deep, but uh, you don't all want to hear us talking about uh, you know, the death of Optimus Prime and uh, the tears that have been shed <laughs> over the years. But uh, that was a good that was a that was a good chat. Thanks for uh, you know indulging the uh, nerdy Transformers fan in me, David. Uh, but uh, we we cut that down. We cut it down for your uh, <laughs> for your own peace of mind. All right. Before we go into the chat, I do have to mention that this episode is brought to you by our good friends at Blacklight Art Design, who are our go-to for all our screen printing needs. They do shirts, hats, patches, you name it. If you can wear it, they can print it. They've done all our shirts and hats for Ever Black Media, and uh, they're great guys. www.blacklightad.com.au. The show is also brought to you by our good friends at RW Promotion, who are the best in the biz when it comes to stickers, flyers, banners, badges, and all other promo you need for your band or business. www.rwpromotion.com.au. I also want to take a moment to let everyone know that the Aztec Mexican Restaurant at Broad Beach on the Gold Coast are teaming up with 94.1 FM's The Local Gig to host a special buy one, get one free night called Two Up Tuesdays where you and a friend or your other half or a mate can go down there, order one of their amazing meals uh, and listen to the live stream uh, of The Local Gig which is hosted by Stewie, uh, good, good dude, local legend. And uh, the local uh, gig radio show, it's a big supporter of Australian artists. So if you're in a band, you can send them your tracks to localgig at 941fm.com.au. And then uh, come down on Tuesdays, get yourself a beer, uh, some tacos, uh, a Durango, which is quite popular, and uh, listen to uh, to some uh, local bands and hang out with some other musicians, network, maybe buy some merch and uh, just uh, support the local scene. That kicks off at 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights at the Aztec in Broad Beach. I will see you there, and uh, they're good dudes there at the restaurant too, and they make a killer feed. Get yourself some tacos, a Durango, some beers. You won't regret it. All right, don't forget to subscribe to the Ever Black podcast through iTunes, Spreaker, Spotify, YouTube, and you can also stream it through Facebook. So it is everywhere. Help us share uh, the content. We really appreciate all the help. And uh, especially going into the new year, we've got heaps and heaps and heaps on the way. And we can't wait to uh, share what we've got cooking up behind the scenes here. All right, here is my chat with David Owen Blackley from Her Name is Murder Productions. Go uh, check out his page and his work. He's incredible. And uh, go book him for any of your music videos or projects because uh, he's damn amazing at what he does. Horns high, people, and happy new year. David, how you going, man? Hello, my friend. I'm great. Thanks for having me back. It's good to talk to you again. Yeah, dude. It's been been a little while. I think it was May was the last time we uh, had a chat, and uh, heaps has happened since then. Yes. It's already the end of the year crazy <laughs> oh, no, i think man, uh, when it. i spoke to you last i was um i was living in lisbon at that stage and now i'm back in the netherlands where where in the netherlands 
At the moment, I'm in a nice medieval town or city. I suppose it depends on the size, but uh, it's called Amersfoort, and it's uh, it's pretty nice. Hey, it's got the canals and the city squares, and it's got lots of woods and forests close by. So it's a really nice place. And it's winter right now, so it's uh, perfect for hibernating and getting a lot of post production done, which is pretty much what I'm going to be all about now for the next little while. <laughs> Moving around like that and you find a little town, a little medieval town that's all uh, sort of grim and frostbitten at the moment. How does that affect your work? Does that have any influence on what you do and the mood of stuff? Um, I like to be on the move and it's funny though because <laughs> usually it's like kind of push and pull with uh, you always want something that you don't have. So when I'm on the move, uh, then I long for a place to call home. And then if I am in a home, I tend to get itchy feet pretty quickly as well. So when I knew that about myself, I really tried to establish uh, a way to work best with that. And so I figured out that it's nice to be in a place for as long as that may be, but then uh, go out on tours or go work with a band in a studio and stay there for a bit and then come back to a home. Um, and that seems to be pretty nice. Uh, it's pretty uh, fortunate of myself and I feel pretty lucky that I can move around and see other places because, yeah, like you said, that does have a pretty big impact on the work, uh, whether it's the place itself, the people or the weather, uh, and that affects my mood uh, and my creative flow, I guess you could say, and all that goes into the work. Has there been a video that's really stuck out where you've gone, oh, this is where I, I, I moved to this place or this is like a, how, how would I say it, that somewhere has had such a, an impact, a, a mood or something like that has impacted a, a, a project? There's probably one place that will always be the answer to this question for me. And um, when I first came overseas, uh, I lived in London and I was meant to be there for one year and it just for various reasons didn't work out. And after five months, I had the choice, uh, the choices of moving back to Australia or really trying to continue on. And so I made the choice to stay and I found this place on a site called Workaway, which is essentially a place where you can trade uh, a service or a skill for uh, a place to stay, uh, for food and things like that. And I found this recording studio uh, heading out towards the highlands of Scotland called Teapot Studio. And it's in this place called the Path of Condi uh, in the Perthshire region. And it's this little studio literally in the middle of nowhere there's no public transport that goes out there there's kind of like the one road in and out um and the closest little village is about a 20 minute car ride away and it's one of those recording studios where when you go there when the band goes there they sleep there they live there they party there it's not based on hours of opening and closing so you know if people are feeling up for it at 2 a.m then the control desk is there ready to go and the band starts recording so you kind of have this like slumber party vibe while creating an album uh and i went out to that place in a time where i was feeling pretty defeated and not really sure what was going to happen with everything and in a way, uh, Teapot Studio, as corny as it sounds, really saved me and it really inspired me and it showed me everything I kind of wanted and hoped for from moving overseas with Her Name Is Murder and it really showed me uh, what I wanted and what I didn't want with uh, this potential adventure. So for me, Teapot Studios will always be that special place and that really influenced this whole trajectory of working and traveling uh, overseas or around the world with my business, it really made me think that it was possible because it just was so inspiring to be mm. in a place like that with such creative energy, uh, with the feeling of anything is possible. So that really, that place is what I have to thank for, I guess, in a way where I am now and persevering. Of course, I mean, last time we spoke, we were uh, talking about the uh, 10th anniversary of Her Name is Murder, and uh, which is just incredible, man. It's It's been such an amazing journey for you, and especially 
since May. You've crammed a hell of a lot in since last time we spoke. Um, yes. what's, what's been the biggest highlight for you in that time? Yes, I think uh, since we spoke last, I had this little seed of an idea of putting together some sort of event for the anniversary and I had a lot of things coming up and I sit here talking to you now and all that's kind of been done and dusted and I'm left here now, <clears throat> uh, I guess, sitting in the dust as it all falls on top of me, just thinking, <laughs> well, what the hell just happened? Um, in a good way, of course. But um I don't know whether it's just great timing because it is the 10 year anniversary and also I turned 35 this year and that whole rule of seven and having big life changing experiences uh, every seven years. But I really feel great where everything is right now with the business and myself. Uh, the two have to go hand in hand with each other. So to have the, the 10 year anniversary event in Sydney uh, which was on November 30th, was a pretty scary thing for me to do because uh, I'm not used to being in front of the camera. I remember even mm. the first conversation with you, I was like so nervous doing that, <laughs> but you made it really easy very quickly. And um, I, I really wanted to do something, though, to commemorate the decade, not just for myself, but for everyone that's been on this journey with me, because at the end of the day, without any of those people, without every single one of those people, there wouldn't even be an event, there wouldn't even be a business. Uh, and I just wanted to have some way of saying thank you to people uh, for providing me with an outlet for my expression and my creative voice because uh, my work is essentially me. And uh, the last 10 years has been a big discovery and journey through my work, finding out who I am as well. And so it was really important for me to invite people and bring people together to just honor that and say thank you and just have something official for the history books as well. So for me, I guess that probably was the highlight of the year because that encapsulates everything. <laughs> um, and once it was done as well, it was, it was a really fun, lovely thing. And once it was done though, I was really happy that it was over with because I was, uh, it was a lot of planning and I was just so nervous leading up to it and it went well. And I was like, excellent. Now I can uh, get on with my life. <laughs> but um, it was really lovely to have uh, people together and see some familiar faces and just have some family and friends and stuff like that there. So it was a nice way to end the year. Wish I could have been there, brother. Sounds yes, amazing. yes, it would have been great to have you there as well. That was the problem as well because Australia is a big place, and I'm from mm. Brisbane, obviously. And but it was held in Sydney, and I had to make a decision: oh, where do I have it? And uh, Sydney, you know, is between Melbourne and Brisbane, and it's not going to be easy for everyone. But that was probably actually one of the hardest parts of the whole thing: <laughs> where do I put it on? <laughs> do you feel that now that you've sort of done that? you've turned the page like uh on on the chapter of the you know what i mean i'm, yeah. I'm having trouble uh coming up with the right words tonight um <laughs> I, know, but, I know what i know um, what you mean like what, what's next <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, kind of like you, you know it's a it, you've you've turned that page and you've started you started chapter two do mm. you feel that that that's you know it's it's significant like that i would love to believe that I could sit here with you in 10 years and celebrate 20 years. That's my plan uh, to keep going. Mm. Uh, and so for me, I'm not daunted by the prospect of another 10 years, but that is quite a big thing. Realistically, um, it's hard to uh, work for yourself. And this is like, this is the one thing that I do. Uh, I don't have another job or anything like that. And I feel because I've made it to 10 years that not that I'm indestructible, but it does give you a lot of uh, stamina and strength and belief in yourself. And I guess my goal now turning to chapter two is to uh, take everything I've learned from the last 10 years and who I am right now and just keep smashing forward man <laughs> that's my goal <laughs> i mean as long as like i can hold a camera i can hear and see uh i want to keep doing this till i i can't and by can't i mean till i'm old and gray or 
like I said, can't hold a camera anymore or something like yeah. that. So that's that's the goal. <laughs> well, by that time, they'll probably have uh, robots and stuff. You know, yeah, like I'll, probably be, like I'll probably be like ninety years with old, the, and yes, exactly. And I'll probably be working with holograms of Jim Morrison, or you know, all these bands <laughs> that I wish I could have worked with. And, and so, <laughs> that in itself is exciting enough to hang around for. So, <laughs> who knows what the future could hold? <laughs> That's right, man. With all the deep fake stuff, you never know what the <laughs> who you're going to work with. <laughs> we'll have teleporting machines, and I'll just like teleport to your office and do the interview in person. See, I like that. That's that's yeah. a really good idea. You know, that's like the old uh, Futurama tubes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I always wish that was real. Actually, when I watched the show, thought they were great. Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, while you were here, though, you you did work with some uh, awesome bands. Um, a lot of bands mm-hmm. that you know we're mutual friends with. One of them mm-hmm. was Our Last Enemy, who yes. you worked with many years ago. How how was it uh, teaming up with those boys again? It was awesome. It was really great because um, those guys behind the scenes have been busy for, uh, I guess you could say, a a few years now. Um, So they've been working really hard on new recordings and putting everything into place. And yeah, it just worked out great this time around that they were ready to go um, with some music video shoots. And it was really cool as well because... um, I think first worked with them in 2011 and we've done a few videos with them. And each time I've worked with them, it's been with my brother, Dean Blackley, uh, who I started the business with. And um, Mm. so we get to work together uh, here and there on various projects, which is awesome. And yeah, so it worked out great for many reasons because he was also able to be on board and I always like working with him. We call ourselves the Blackley brothers and we do clips with her name is murder uh on various different projects and it was great to work with the guys the new sound songs are sounding huge uh and we had a great fun a great fun time working together again they're the type of band as well where uh where we kind of know each other pretty well so we know how to work with each other we know how to push each other and uh I, w- I want to say it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of hard work as well, but that hard work is a lot of fun. And um, it's really good when you've been with a band for nearly a decade and you've kind of grown together and you, you know, you follow each other's paths of success. And it's just great to be a part of that journey with any band. Um, really you start feeling like that proud parent type of feeling or something it's really quite a special thing so yeah I love it when I come to Australia it's about once a year and I get to work with a lot of bands like that that I've worked with before or I'm really good friends with now and uh, it really it really creates such dynamic projects because the trust is there already so Mm. you just jump straight in to doing what you do um, and yeah, it's great because each project gets bigger and better uh, for all those various reasons. So that was really nice and did a, a shoot with Red Hook, The Silencio and Pete Murray as well. So it was a good oh, cool. couple of weeks. Yeah. And I bet they were all different in their own way. Like I yeah. can imagine like the <laughs> Silencio shoot, Our Last Enemy, Red Hook and Pete Murray would all be different sort of vibes as well. Yeah, definitely. And that's such a beautiful thing about the work because it's easy to say, oh, yeah, I do the same thing. I shoot music videos or I shoot music documentaries, but each project is far from the same. And yeah, that's that's what I mean, keeps it so fresh and exciting. And uh, even if they weren't, even if they were all the same, uh, the people involved in the creative process or people involved in the bands are definitely not the same as well. So you're working with so many different dynamics uh, continuously. And that's why I think you never stop learning. Uh, You never stop getting nervous. You never stop getting pushed. Um, And that's a really great way to be uh, with your work and with your art as well. So it's really good to... uh, be able to work yeah with so many different styles of artists and personalities i'm really thankful for that i'm also really thankful that my work can translate through those different spectrums because i think essentially her name is murder comes across as a uh, a visual business that maybe 
works with mainly heavy music and I think mm. over the last five years in particular particularly with the move overseas uh, it's really allowed for that to branch out more um, and I f- would find myself in various pockets around Europe working with such obscure artists and music um, and being able to release projects like that has really opened up uh, the business for example, then to work with someone like Pete Murray, who maybe I might not have got that job five years ago because I would have been deemed uh, someone that does only heavy bands or do- does only grim, intense music video work. So it's a nice position as well to be in that kind of traveling to different places has really allowed the business to open up and spread its wings. And also show that you're also versatile in your yes. style. And adapt is, exactly, yeah, yeah. Thanks. That's so true. And adaptable because that's a big part yeah. of it as well. Kind of rolling with the punches, hitting the ground running. You really have to be quick and read the situation and adapt. And yeah, that that's a lot of fun as well. That's why I think a lot of the time, sometimes a shoot or a tour will end, and you are literally standing there, just thinking, "What what the hell just happened?" And you really have to start piecing <laughs> it all together because. It's not autopilot, but you do become what the job requires or you become mm. the person that the job requires. And I think that's a part of that, that part of you exists, but it might not be a part of you that you use all the time or every day. And so you can be running on this level that is quite unusual for you to normally run at. And uh, when it's done, you sometimes then need a chance to... Uh, I think it's important enough every job you had to take like a break, uh, even if it's for a day, because you do need to recharge the batteries. And that's important. One thing you did mention before is uh, along the journey that you've, you've had bands that have gone on to, you've, you've sort of grown with some of these bands. And, mm-hmm. you know, there's some of the bands that you have worked with have gone on to make waves internationally, like uh, Alpha Wolf and, and Die Art is Murder and, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. How does it feel for you? knowing that you're part of of their growth and their journey and that you've helped in a way you know project that image out into the universe it's it's pretty interesting because uh with some of those bands that you mentioned there's different degrees of being involved and then there's some bands where you know I've literally been there from nearly the very beginning and say for example uh Viata's Murder, uh, we did their very first music video at a stage where that was very new and exciting for everyone involved because it was their mm. first music video. My business was still pretty fresh, uh, very fresh in terms of working with a big up and coming band like that also because they were kind of on the brink of blowing up. And, um, and then from then on, they've gone obviously to become one of the biggest band, like heavy bands in the world, I guess you could say at the moment, and work yeah. with so many fantastic directors. And it's, it's really cool to have been involved uh, with that, you know, that very first music video and then coming to work with Alpha Wolf that you mentioned as well. That's then coming on the tail end where they've done so much work. They've toured Australia so much. They've worked with some of my favourite Australian music video directors and then luckily enough, I got to work with them for their very last music video, Russian Roulette. And that's coming on the tail end of, you know, a journey that I haven't been a part of, but I get to contribute to. And now I am a part yes. of that. And so that's really cool as well, because, you know, uh, first of all, like I'm a huge fan of Alpha Wolf and to work with them for me was like something on the bucket list because I admire their music and I especially admire their music video back catalogue. So that's really cool as well to, you know, either be involved at the beginning or at the end or in the middle of something. And then there's a band, say, like Red Hook, where I've been involved with Emmy Mack and uh, her other bands and then Red Hook from the beginning to now. And that's been like a continuous relationship. And that's super gratifying as well because I've known Em for so long and then they get to go overseas and play Download Festival and yeah. tour with Three Days Grace and Bad Wolves, and I get to go on tour with them to document that. And for me, that's just beyond words because I know how hard those guys work. I know how hard M's worked for as long as I've been working, if not longer. And then you see things happen and you see people get it and 
you see uh, kids in the crowd looking up to her and being inspired by her and, oh man, like that stuff's just so profound. And to be a part of anything like that, any shape or form, at the beginning, at the end or throughout the entire thing is just a huge, huge honour and I really don't take that for granted. That's such a big part of what I do and why I love it because of that that emotional investment um, yeah. for good people doing good things that believe in what they're doing as well. It's really inspiring. Also, it really pushes me to do the best I can for them. And a- another band that you've worked with uh, is Sepultura. Mm-hmm. And uh, you recently worked with them again. That new album, Quadra Man, it's, it's uh, I've, huge. I've, been lucky, <laughs> I've been lucky enough to hear it. Um, and uh, that album, Quadra, is fucking huge, man. And that's not out until February 7. Yes. But have you, you've heard it? I'm, I'm, of course, you probably heard it. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, I, I, well, if you've heard it, then I can say that I've heard it as well. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Andreas, um, yeah, he sent me the album a little, uh, when I was back in Australia just recently. And so, yes, I've been lucky enough to hear the finished product. Cause that's a funny thing being in the studio as well. Like I go into the studio with them, for example, and I, I haven't heard the pre-pro or the demos so I come in and then I'm I'm hearing the scratch tracks and then them laying things down and it's like it, it feels when you go through that it's like getting bits and pieces and then as the weeks go go on you hear the songs grow but you know say when Andreas is recording rhythm guitar I can hear a riff and I have no idea all the lead that's going to be put over that or the vocals at that point in time. And so I can hear things and I have no idea like the scope that's yet to come with these songs or uh, you could hear something and go, Oh, that's not what I was expecting. And then you hear it in the album with everything else and you're like, ah, okay, that's where that was going. And uh, so to hear, you know, uh, the finished product, is a pretty cool thing because you've just been kind of getting the breadcrumbs throughout the entire experience and this and that and bits and pieces. And, um, yeah, it's a really exciting time for the guys because Machine Messiah, their previous album, uh, really lit a fire uh, with mm. the band as well as the fans. And those guys are just so hungry. It's really cool. I mean, you could say in a way that, they're not spring chickens anymore, but you, they don't act like it and they keep pushing themselves and having uh, Eloy in the band, the drummer, I think has really opened them up with where they can go writing wise. And because he's such a beast as well, it's really pushed the other guys to step up their game. And uh, yeah, just the four of those uh, guys in Sepultura really get along well as well, which is really cool to see after 30 plus years. Um, this lineup, they are, they they just have great dynamic, and it feels really lovely to have been a part of this era of Sepultura. Because I think I was saying to you last time, like they got me into heavy metal music, and mm. they began that whole journey for me. And to be around now, when it's kind of coming back full circle to that excitement and anticipation of one of the greats. Uh, which is, of course, I think what they definitely deserve is really cool. And to have documented Machine Messiah and then being asked back to document Quadra uh, is a, a dream come true because this is a really exciting time for the band. And it's a real honor to be able to document that and tell that story. So I've had only great experiences with that band and I'm uh, really proud of the work that uh, I do for or with them also just still trips me out as well (laughs) because yeah yeah, i was the dude that like knew all the songs knew all the words and play air guitar to bands like sepultura in the lounge room so yeah it's it's really cool uh to be a part of that and yeah that's the same thing you know just being emotionally invested in it like bands with red hook and the bands i was talking about before Mm. for me you know i am invested in all these bands this, this work is what keeps me going and uh, allows me to express myself. So I, I love being so attached and involved and invested in what I do. And I think for me, it really makes a big difference to the final product. 
absolutely, man. That's so good to hear that you know that you've uh, what you you think the same thing about the album. I think everyone's going to lose lose their shit when they hear Quadra. It's <laughs> it's cool seeing the anticipation build because yeah, the, the the lyric video just dropped, and I mean after the first song, Isolation. Uh, because everyone was so ready to hear new music after Machine Messiah yeah. and then Isolation didn't disappoint the people that look like. And so now it's just continual rise in anticipation until February. So it's really cool I to know. see that. Crazy, crazy, crazy shit. And, and the uh, guys are vibing uh, it as well. They're really excited about it. So oh, if, that's that, awesome. if, if that goes to say anything to anyone who's a fan listening to this, the band are really, really proud of this. That's awesome. And, uh, uh, of course, I mean, looking back at all the, the, the videos you've done and, I mean, what was what was the, you know, we've spoken a lot about the highs, but what about the lows? What about the uh, the most difficult shoots that you've had to do? Is there one in particular that you had to really, you know, pull all your resources, go into troubleshooting mode, and just it all came together at the last minute? Is there one video that sort of really sticks out? I have been pretty lucky, to be honest, where uh, things seem to fall into place pretty well because of planning. And then if it falls apart, because things can easily fall apart, even if you plan, that within uh, myself and the band, we're able to kind of save it and put something else together, which then ends up seeming like it was far better than the original concept. Uh, So... Yeah, uh, I'd probably be boring in saying that I've never really, unless I have completely forgotten because it either wasn't that catastrophic or it hasn't (laughs) happened. But I guess emotionally, um, so I've been shooting with a Canon 7D um, for or since like 2010, and Mm. that camera at the time when it came out was uh, considered pretty pretty high end. And it was a top of the line, especially with the whole kit, Canon Nikon uh, cameras that were coming out shooting video. And I remember getting that camera because a lot of people at the time shooting music videos in America and things like that were using that camera and I liked what it did. And then especially in the last few years, because I still still use that same camera, um, I found it was really so responsible and vital for giving me my visual and uh, what I feel comfortable with. And it wasn't until um, it was the end of last year, so the end of 2018, I was on a shoot in Western Australia um, shooting with uh, a good friend, MJ, and we were doing a music video shoot for her and the camera just finally didn't didn't turn back on. And it lasted me nearly 10 years, but it was really, uh, it was, (laughs) the camera had always meant so much to me. But it wasn't until it actually, I'd say, died or passed on, (laughs) because that's what it felt like, that it really hit me. And it might sound a bit silly, but that camera had been with me everywhere, uh, especially overseas. And, like, it had really been with me with a lot of things that no one knows about, you know. Uh, Mm. And... It's, it's been there for my, my highs and lows and it's been my, my extension, my voice to provide me with this business as well. And so when it stopped working, I, I had to have a moment and we, we got another camera, uh, luckily, um, to show how passe these cameras are now. The artist was like, oh yeah, I got a 7D lying around somewhere. We can, we can use mine. <laughs> so I was able to finish the shoot. Um, but once the shoot finished, then, yeah, then I, I had uh, that moment to myself to realize, oh, wow, so that camera's gone now and I have to think about getting a replacement or getting a new camera. And, um, yeah, I, I grieved, I cried, and my, my girlfriend was there and gave me a big hug. But um, it had been some sort of relationship or, like, a best friend or um, it had allowed me to share with people what, I see, uh, and places I had been and some of the moments, uh, that had really had such a profound impact on me. And then, uh, those other moments of, uh, you know, not knowing where I was going to sleep next when I was overseas or when I had no money left and didn't Mm. know what I was going to do next. Like it would just be me and my camera and my backpack. So that, 
was kind of a situation that I had to bounce back from in a way, just like when you lose something that you care about a lot. And uh, then I had the choice of, oh, do I get a, a fancy new camera? Oh, do I do this or do I do that? And of course, I just got myself another 7D. <laughs> so I'm still <laughs> shooting on a 7D. <laughs> Do you still have that that original camera? Yeah, I've kept the body <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not ready to part ways with it yet. I, I I think when I eventually have my house, that's you know when I'm like, this is going to be my place now. I'm setting up shop here for good. Uh, I have I want to have a room with all my CDs that are in boxes in my mum's garage because I got so many CDs and I got VHS tapes and cassettes and band posters and uh, props from music video shoots. I want to set up a room that will have all that stuff in it and the Canon 7D body will go there too. It'll hang around. That's beautiful, man. No, because you know why? <laughs> you know, there's there's a valid reason why you'd feel that way is because in a way it's an extension of yourself. It's oh, like totally. a, you know, and it's like a famous guitarist with, you know, their, their, that one guitar, you know, that's, yes. I totally yeah, get it. Exactly. Totally get it. Okay, cool. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't uh, really, yeah, shared that type of story before because, yeah, it's, it's quite a, a personal one. And in a way, I was always not sure if it would sound a bit silly, I guess. No. But yeah, no, it does no. make sense when you say the guitar thing as well, because you do hear a lot of people uh, or guitarists speak of their guitars like that. And you're right, it is an extension. That, that camera has given me vintage HD, literally. I mean, that camera has given mm. me the perfect style I've always dreamed of having. It just took me... <laughs> nearly a decade to find it <laughs> but i got there in the end <laughs> oh man it was you know but then again you know it's like in other ways looking at it, it's like uh luke and r2 you know it's <laughs> r2d2 there you go it's it's my, r2, yep. yeah. my r2d2 70 <laughs> there you go see see it's a, it sounds like a droid there it you does go. doesn't it <laughs> <laughs> i like it <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, and of course, I mean, uh, what's what's next for you, man? I mean, gonna twenty twenty is like three, four days away. Yeah. Chapter two. What, so, what's what's going on? Dealing dealing with that. Twenty twenty sounds uh, futuristic in a way to me. Do you think? Like twenty twenty. I was watching. It does, um, but not anymore. <laughs> no, you know what I mean. Like here. ten years ago, you go twenty twenty, you go, oh shit, like flying cars and stuff. And now we're like, uh, you know, just bushfires and. You know, apocalyptic. Yep. You know, time yeah. It's maybe rollers. maybe like the Mad Max future is coming. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> that's what's happened. Yeah, I was uh, <laughs> on my on my birthday in November. I watched because one of my favorite movies is the animated Transformers movie from the eighties. And um, uh, I think by I default, it's agree. my favorite movie. If someone asks me, yeah, I'm just like it's that movie because I think essentially it is. But you know, you have other favorites that come and go as well. But I may have the date wrong if I do, but in the beginning, it says the year is 2005. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like in space with the space planets and Transformers, obviously. And I was thinking, well, in the 80s, 2005 must have seemed very far away. <laughs> it's, it's true. But, uh, you know, I, I agree. That is one of my favorite movies. Um, and I need to know, do you still cry? When Prime dies. Oh, man, that do. scene is super intense. And uh, my favorite Transformer is Prowl, the police car. And he's one, oh, of, the wow. four, he's one of the four Autobots that gets killed uh, on the spaceship heading to Earth with Ironhide. Ironhide, and, um, yep. Oh, man, when they did that scene and just, like, ruthlessly killed off some of the originals, that was probably the first instance of the end of my childhood. <laughs> It's, uh, you know, it's, it's funny, man. Like, uh, I don't think we've spoken about this before, but no. I actually, I'm a massive Transformers fan. I actually mm-hmm. have Peter Cullen's signature tattooed on my arm. Oh, wow. Because uh, he's, cool. he's the greatest. And uh, that movie is, yeah, yeah, that movie is a very big deal. I'm, I'm one of those, I sit on the hot rod side of the fence, the rod. Okay. Oh, yeah. So that's a, that's a very divided fence, isn't it? <laughs> it is a very divided fence. A lot of people uh, blame the... him for a certain thing. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, <laughs> fuck those people. Yeah, he was um, just doing uh, what he thought best, following his heart. Following thank his you very intuition. much. Thank you very much. He was, you know, and, it, you know, 
fucking now I'm getting angry. <laughs> One could even say wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So good. <laughs> Nelson Shin it. directed it. I got to look him up. I got to see what I remember looking him up and trying to see what else that he had done because he was the director of it. But um, I can't remember what else he was responsible for. Because I think him down. Yes. <laughs> he, he took the, he took the Transformers thing to a whole new level because of that movie. Oh, though. absolutely. Hasn't been the same it. since. No. <laughs> the uh, bar's too high. I haven't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, of course, I mean, but yeah, of course, 2020, man. Um, what's, uh, <laughs> what's, uh, what do you got planned? What's, what's going, coming up? So, yeah, just, uh. Enjoying right now the the winter and getting stuck into a bunch of post production because the last six months have been really really great. Uh, I've really enjoyed myself getting to work with a lot of bands that have pushed me and challenged me. And um, now I have to uh, deal with the other side of that, which is the post production phase and putting it all together. But I I love to edit. And uh, that's a really big part of my personality, actually kind of have two sides. I think like most people do uh, on set and on tour is, you know, the social, the extroverted side. And then the introverted side is me tucked away in an attic behind my keyboard or um, just working away day in, day out. <laughs> and um, that's, the, that's probably the bigger part of my personality. And I really enjoy the editing side of things, putting everything together. So coming into 2020, uh, there'll be a lot of releases coming out, which is really exciting. Got a stack of content coming out with Sepultura, got um, a documentary coming out with Will Haven, a documentary coming out for Pete Murray, various music videos also, um, some stuff with Lotus Eater, which is um, a band from the UK that, I really, really love and I'm making really cool heavy music. But um, yeah, I'm just going to be enjoying the winter for the next couple of months, man. Edit, 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 edit. And then once that phase of work is kind of out, then it's on to the next. But I think I probably uh, won't really start taking on new work probably till the end of February, I think. Hectic, man. Well, uh, yeah. first things first, congratulations on 10 years brother you made it and uh on to the next uh big step phase two phase and, two uh, phase yes. two well kind of if if that's the way you sort of look at it or it's just one continuation but uh congratulations <laughs> regardless brother and thanks again for hanging out on the show and uh sharing your wisdom with us oh thank you very much for having me man it's a pleasure to talk to you once again and uh yeah wish you and everyone a happy happy new year